So what you do is you, you bounce the rod. If I just leave it in there, it will snap, and that's what you'll see these little pieces. Mm -hmm. That's why I wear the leather thing, because I don't like my legs being burned. <laughs> so what you do is you just heat this up. There's two ways to do it. There's what the people call the gathering spot, which is I can make just a giant ball of glass. Mm -hmm. and, and they say how to practice this is get like a, a stick and do, get some honey. Oh, And then okay. you can practice of how to get <laughs> it's, it's a little safer. Now that's, yeah, some say. people will gather a big ball and then they will twist it on um, the mandrel. So I'm going to heat the mandrel up and then they'll, they'll turn it on like this. I kind of like to put the, uh, the rod in the flame. So you still, you're heating and it so as I'm as heating you. it as I turn it. It's kind of the same as I'm also a knitter. They're the people that cast on and they, they know they have 64 stitches so it's like five yards and then they, right. they go backwards and and if they run out, they take it off and start over again. And I'm kind of like, no, you start at the end and just keep mm -hmm. going until um, there are those who plan better. Mm -hmm. There's also the, the, those are the knitters that also make gauges. I just go look for someone who's bigger or smaller <laughs> than what I made. If it doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's kind of lopsided as I go, and the more I turn it, and I use this to help steady my hand. I think I'd also use this, this is out of graphite, if I want I could squish the bead, make squares, make them flat. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a white core, and I drop it out and I keep turning it till it solidifies. Mm -hmm. Then so I keep it shaped. So again, as I start to melt the next glass, I keep this in and out of the flame so it won't you know, you get too cool. Too cool. So now this is white with the clear purple. And are we going to do stripes or dots? Or what do you want to do? Stripes. Stripes. Stripes are fun because you start with dots mm -hmm. and then you put something over it and the, the glass will want to travel towards the mandrels on either side, the physics oh. of the glass. And so it will pull the glass. So do we want to have, I'm going to put white on for the dots and do we want to put the purple over it so they're like purple stripes? Or do you want to put clear so it's clear stripes or do you want to do... I, I will always vote for more purple. Okay, more purple they're, 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 it is. Okay. So as the bead gets yeah, bigger, sometimes I will turn it to the center. Interesting. Yeah. So then you can see the, um, once I finish them, then I um, clean them out and put them in a kiln to anneal them. And then the other fun part is then making earrings out of them. So, um, it takes a long time, doesn't it? It does take, yeah, anything. but it's, it's been a real social event. Oh. And so, like Jackie and I will sit down and our, um, our Donna who was just here and put them together and it's fun to have other people because you go, what do you think about this? And you're like, well, should this one be above this one or that right. one? And, you know, and everyone's got different ideas of what... How long have you been working on this, Sandy? Probably about three years. Oh. And I don't get a lot of time. What's neat about my situation is that I can come in, turn it on, make one bead and turn it off. Because it's always set up. Mm -hmm. that's so that's great. fun. Nice. So what I did is I put purple on the bottom and then I um, put white dots on it and I put purple over the top and it will take those dots and make them stripey like those things there.
Right now I'm making some earring beads, so I'm doing like two at a time. Mm, so they match. So they match in theory. Well, you know, natural variations. That's right. That kind of stuff. Oh yeah. Plus, on either side of your head, so you're okay. <laughs> so it's all about just dots and um, placing glass. So you'll see. So this one's just melting. I'm trying to make it. I just keep turning it. And I keep. I heat the other one up every once in a while. If I don't let it stay heated, it will crack mm -hmm. before it gets... Do you have to temper them afterwards? I do. I put them over here in a fiberglass blanket right here, mm -hmm. and then they will slowly cool, <clears throat> and then I will um, put them in a kiln later. Mm -hmm. um, I could, if I had a kiln, just put them right in and what they call annealing them, and that brings mm -hmm. the crystal structure all up to the same um, spot. Otherwise, the crystal structure on the top glass might be different than the one underneath, and it just makes them more fragile. Right. So if you were going to be buying beads com out uh, commercially, you'd want to ask them if they've been annealed. And if they've oh, been okay. annealed, then you say, great. If not, don't pay as much. They're still beautiful beads, mm -hmm. and they might not ever break. But, but they have a better chance of being a little more fragile. Um, and so it's just a thing to kind of keep in mind. And sometimes people will have a kiln that... Um, they'll just put the bead right into after it comes to torch, and that's better because it has less shock. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing now is this is just, this is actually clear gray, and that's orange on there. And I'm gonna melt them flat. Yeah, I have a little kiln that I use downstairs, and what I do is I just gather all my beads, because after these cool, I will then clean them, because they'll have bead release, I'll take them off the mandrel, and then I'll, um, clean them with the bead release, you know, with a little bit of that rasp there, mm -hmm, okay. and clean them out so they're not, um, um, and then I'll put them all in the kiln and bring them up slowly to 1200 degrees and then, um, mix them. Yeah, how do you get them off of the mandrel? You just twist them off. Oh, okay. Um, they, the bead release, which is that powdery stuff that's on there, mm -hmm. the stuff here, mm -hmm. it's like kiln wash if you were a potter. Oh, it, right. It, it keeps you from getting them stuck. There's but, a, but it doesn't allow them to spin. Right. Yeah. Okay. It, you have to heat. If you don't, if you just try to put the bead on it, on the release, and you haven't heated up the release, mm -hmm. the glass will spin on the mandrel. You actually have to heat up the bead release as you're starting to spin on them. So now what you've got, that's, that's actually gray with orange on it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to put it in here and let it cool. And here's kind of that gray and orange 